Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I am David de Torres from SysDig. I am the first David from SysDig that you will see in the lighting talks. By the way, we are hiring. If you are called David, maybe you have a chance. <laughs> and OK, we'll talk about uh, easy anomaly detection, a little bit of an introduction. Actually, early in the morning, you made an amazing presentation about anomaly detection. And actually, this can be seen in a, as a continuation from that, because first time that you see anomaly detection, it is like when you learn how to use a hammer. Everything seems like a nail. And it is not like that. You have to learn and know when to use them and for what. So let's start. Let's first uh, see what is an anom anomaly. To learn if something is an anomaly, to have to compare that with something. And to be able to model that, we will use a little bit of statistics. We'll make a simplification. This is like, OK, let's consider an spherical call. OK, let's consider our data to fit and a standard normal uh, distribution. But these have some advantages, and they are that normal distribution have the property that we know that in the range of average minus plus standard deviation, we have approximately 70% of the samples. And if you go further to twice the standard deviation from the uh, average, we have 95% of the data. So even there is a seed score that it is how far is the data from the average measured in standard deviation. So this way, we have a way to calculate if a value that we are evaluating is an anomaly, or is this something normal? So let's get to the work. First, we will see how to calculate something anomalous in a group. This is a Easy example. Let's imagine we have a lot of temperature sensors, and one of them is getting crazy. But how do we know it is crazy or not? Where is the point? Well, uh, PronQL is giving us already the functions to do that. And actually, in Bjorn's presentation, we saw already a snapshot of this. We are using average function and standard deviation, and we know that using this, actually you see the blue part of the expression is getting that part of the anomalies, and the orange part of the expression is taking the, another, the bottom part of the anomalies. This is easy. But what if we don't have other group of similar samples or sensors or time series to compare with? Well, maybe we can compare things with what happened before. So maybe with this an anomaly, if we know that our time series is smooth, and suddenly there is a peak or a valley, and we can say, OK, let's compare with the last five minutes, or the last hour, or the last week. PromQ already has functions for this. We have the average over whatever, or here. We have the average over time, and we have the standard deviation over time. And adjusting the window, we can use them to say, OK, if the value that I am uh, trying to figure out if it is an anomaly or not. It's over the standard deviation over the last five minutes plus the standard deviation x times, or the contrary for the bottom part. Maybe this is an anomaly, and maybe it is worth investigating. But this is OK if I am looking for external temperature, for example, something I know it will always be smooth. But what happened in normal life? In normal life, we have batch processes, we have things that happen every week, every hour, every day. So maybe this peak is not an anomaly. Maybe I can discover that this happens before. Let's see how we treat seasonality. The trick is that we have to take the spans of seasons, and we have to take the previous one to the future, to the present time, and the another one again back to the future and so on. We can do this with the offset function. But there is a problem. If we only use the offset function, we are still having the same time series, so we'll have duplicated data in the same time series. So here's the black magic. We are using the label replace to add another extra label, artificial one, so they are not the same time series. And then suddenly, I don't have one time series, but I have a lot time series. And I can use the same trick done before. I have a group, a gr a group anomaly detection, like we saw before. So I can say, OK, if 
I can make the average of the previous thing that we saw, plus, twice, standard deviation, whatever. Then I'm setting up this uh, red limit that you are seeing there. Last, there are some scenarios, they are not common, but sometimes you can do that, where you can make or you have a function, correlation function, that can predict a value according to another time series. For example, in the case of the energy consumed by a building in a is a function of the external temperature. So you know if outside you have 25 degrees, the building should consume X kilowa uh, kilowatts. If not, we have a problem. So you can model this directly in PromQL. You can write the uh, correlation function plus the error or a correlation function minus the error to have the bottom limit and just check if it is outside or not this safe band. Um, okay, that's all. Thank you so much. <laughs>